Thank you very much. So, I'm the old bald one with the Australian accent. We, thank you. We need to measure success to convince politicians that this is a successful model, and we need to market it to keep on bringing the tourists who bring the money. I'd like to thank all these people for bringing me here, some very familiar logos. If you don't recognise the archer, talk to Rob Moffat. He's here somewhere. Um, Ryan, especially, thank you very much for the invitation. So how can we actually measure the success? What does tourism contribute to conservation? We can look at how much it contributes to parks funding, how much it contributes to conserving remaining populations of rare species, and how much it can reduce extinction risks. These are proportions of parks agency budgets funded by tourism. Botswana and the Seychelles, top left-hand corner, more than 80%. Australia and the US, bottom right, billions from government, not much from tourism. Uh, proportions of remaining individuals of IUCN red-listed mammals funded by tourism. You can see rhino, Ellie, lion, and all the rest up on the top right. Uh, I won't tell you. All of this stuff is up on the website if you want the details. So these are the things that you guys all do to contribute from tourism to conservation. But of course, there are also local impacts. We converted all those things into population parameters and fed them into population viability models. These are orangutans. The black lions, the black lines, are what happens without tourism. They go extinct because of logging. If there's enough tourism, they survive and do well. So tourism clearly makes a big difference to that particular species. Same thing, cheetah, tourism, for multiple populations in sub-Saharan Africa has, is increasing the chance that these particular populations of cheetah will survive indefinitely. Same thing for wild dog. Uh, so basically, everything you guys do works. Science is on your side. Carry on. 